My guest today is Silvio Nicoletta. Silvio, am I saying your name correctly? Yes, that is pretty close. <laughs> so you, will you say it for me, please? Silvio Nicolito. Silvio yeah. Nicolito. Yes. Well, it, so actually the Romanian alphabet has a few additional characters than the English one doesn't have. Okay. So we had like a T with a small comma on it. It was sort of like a TZ. I know that one because I drink a lot of Suica. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you've got that one done, right? So my name is Nicolitze, like with the Suica, Nicolitze, and E, uh, uh, which is sort of an A with a small sort of parentheses well, on top of it. thank you for clarifying that for you. Uh, yeah. Mutsumesk. Wait a minute. Mutsumesk. Yeah. It's pretty close. All right, I've been coming here for five years and I still yeah. haven't got the language yet. But, but let's talk about something else. Let's talk about technology. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, you, we're here at IT Camp in uh, yeah. Cluj, Romania. Yep. And you did a talk on what? I spoke about chatbots and the opportunity for enterprises to leverage bot technology and in particular and AI in general. So that mm -hmm. was the topic I, uh, I tried to approach, and we'll see based on the feedback forms if people thought I did a good job or not. Hopefully I did. Hopefully. What were you trying to communicate? Uh, well, I always try to be informative and entertaining, mm -hmm. right? Because those two go hand in hand. If you're entertaining, that means that people are likelier to remember the message you're trying to, yeah. to, to get across to them. Uh, so generally, you know, the audience here is made up of engineers for the most part. Right. And they either work for software product companies or professional services companies. So I tried to cater to both tar to both targets, right? So I tried to educate them as to why, uh, you know, mid-market and maybe enterprise companies are going to be investing heavily in, in AI in general and in chat chatbots in particular over the, next, over the coming years. So trying to raise awareness that that trend is coming and also highlighting them the need to, for them to start experimenting with bot frameworks, with, with bot building platforms now so that they are prepared to either bake, the, you know, bake AI and bot technology into their product roadmaps if they're working for a product company or to provide services in that vein for their customers. Right? So okay, talk, so you, start talking you, to them early so that they're the sort of vendor of choice for these uh, uh, sophisticated services which you know, behooves Cluj as a uh, um, IT provider in general, if we're doing more of that stuff and less of the I don't know CRM, you know, e-commerce, you know, WordPress customization work. Right. So you feel like we're the the, the demand is like this right now, and it's about to take off. We're yes. Yes. Very we're much so. Really that. Uh, what, well, let's start first of all. What is we talk about this chatbot technology? What yeah. are we talking about? What is that? Well, a chatbot is just a piece of software, right? So it's a software component that generally doesn't really have its own user interface, mm -hmm. but that you interact with either through, you know, through natural language. So you, you either type at it uh, or you speak to it, right? Mm -hmm. So people are probably very familiar these days with Amazon's Alexa product, right? right. So that's just a piece of hardware, which is a microphone array, a reasonably good speaker, that talks to a bot that lives in, in, in the public cloud. So that's that's probably the best known example of a chatbot and it's a very uh, successful product into itself because I think uh, Amazon has sold uh, uh, you know, uh, tens of millions of uh, those little uh, right. puck looking do you things. Own one? Uh, no, I do not. I do not no, no, I am surrounded by enough technology <laughs> in my professional activities that I try to you know keep it as much. Um, I don't want to spend my spare time upgrading the operating system or my on my air conditioning or anything <laughs> like that. So I try to keep my the hardware around my house as simple, as robust, as old-fashioned as possible. Okay. I don't wanna, Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Now, now, what the your assertion before that this technology is about to take off? Why do you say that? Uh, well, it's not just me that's saying that. I tend to defer to the foresters and the gardeners of the world okay. when uh, you know, because their you know the, their business model is actually trying to predict the future. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that it's uh, you know a lot of brands are I increasingly giving up their mobile applications and they're switching to chatbots. And, and the, the biggest reason for that is that's where the eyeballs are. That's where the users are. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as of, I think, mid-2015, more people are using uh, the top four uh, instant messaging apps than are using the top four social networks. Right? So, you know, the WhatsApp, the Facebook messengers out there have more daily active users uh, than Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, right? So that's I did not know that. 
Yes, that and and the difference is you know social networks are growing like this, you know uh, instant messaging apps are growing like this. Okay. So it's um, you know the, you know it's it's a it's a big trend in that space. So if you want to access uh, people, you know that's where you you can get to them. And also the, another um, interesting fact is the average smartphone user in the U.S. installed zero net new applications. The previous month, on their phone. S on their phone, yeah, that's mm. exactly right. So it's it's you know, uh, and it's it's a matter of just getting lost into in in the uh, you know marketplace, right? So because right. I think Android has like half a million applications. You know, you come out with yet another right. to do. So if you build app. an app, you're relying on somebody to take action to yep. install that app. Yep. Whereas yep. if you build a chat, if bot, you build a chat bot, it's, yeah, tools. you don't really have to install it; you just add it. Okay. Right? So Facebook Messenger has the bots. Uh, bots tab on there, so okay. you search for it, and and, and the barrier to entry is much is oh, okay. much lighter. All right. right, fair enough. Yeah. Are you building bots as part of your day job or part of your uh, uh, fun hobby? Part? So I'm not. Uh, yeah. So I work for a cloud communications company called Eight by Eight, and which is you know what we do, and we are certainly looking at at that space, right? As both. So we have both uh, sort of collaboration. We're technically competitors to Microsoft. Yeah, we compete with Skype for Business in this that regard, right? This is my show. This is not okay. Microsoft's show. Uh, so, that's, uh, so that's one aspect of it. And we also build call center software, right? Mm -hmm. and, and call centers, the name of the game is deflecting, right? So whenever you can solve a customer's problem without putting them on the line with a human being. Because human being and time is expensive. Yeah, it's, it, cost is one issue, but it's also customer satisfaction, right? Uh, you know, uh, you can't... There's not that much elasticity when it comes to a call center, right? Because you might have two hours of really peak calls, but okay. you can't really do a four x of your staffing uh, oh, okay. in, a, so in an easy fashion. Getting those questions right? answered faster. So yeah, so so mainly the goal there is not necessarily reducing costs, but it, it's in, it's reducing the people spend on hold, sure. waiting to, to to get their problem resolved, okay. right? So if you can build a chatbot that's good enough about addressing, you know, the top. Uh, you know, top five, top ten, top twenty issues the customers have for them. You know, uh, it's a win-win. Right? And then cost obviously pay a factor in there because nobody's sure. trying to burn money. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's uh, uh, that's why uh, you know eight by eight is looking into this. But it's uh, you know, it's a big company. I'm one of fifteen hundred. Yeah. So it's, oh, it's, um, uh, it's I'm, a, I'm a, one yeah. of a hundred thousand. <laughs> there you go. So it's uh, yeah, there's a there, there are dedicated uh, teams within eight by eight that are looking into ML and AI. Okay. And more more of the uh, tell me a little about the the technology that's involved in creating chatbots. Uh, it's uh, it's a very fragmented space, right? So there are two sort of you can sort of split them up into two categories, right? So there are the uh, bot platforms where the barrier to entry is much lower. You generally don't even need an engineering background, right? So it's just more uh, pretty much it's a what you see is what you get type of paradigm. You mm -hmm. drag and drop certain components, you mm -hmm. check a few boxes, and you click. Publish and there you have your chatbot, and it, hmm. you know you, you, you're, it can only be as sophisticated as what the platform allows you to do. Hmm. But you can get started very, very quickly, and those are very well suited for you know building an MVP, a proof of concept, that sort of thing. And there are the bot frameworks out there, which entail you know you writing code in either JavaScript or C Sharp or Java or Python or hmm. so a reasonably mainframe language. Uh, but you have much greater flexibility and power to b do, you know, pretty much anything you want, right? And and Microsoft's a contender in this space. Yeah. Amazon has their own pr framework. Uh, Facebook uh, are, have a really popular one called Wit AI, which uh, um, which is really good. But um, you know, it really depends on on how far you want to take it and what your end goals are, right? I mean, you can you could potentially also pivot from one to the other, right? When you're just kicking around um, an idea, you could start you with use a, one of the drag and drop. Yeah, ones one of the drag and drop ones, really easy ones. Oh. And then you'll hit the wall. Yeah, see, you'll, would, you'll would one hundred people? Yeah, there. would one hundred people actually install this thing and interact with it on a daily basis to validate your idea before you actually, you know, pull the trigger and invest into an R and D uh, yeah. exercise, and then you move ship to from a platform. What to a about framework. this idea of understanding what people are saying, or <laughs> that uh, allowing people to ask? Questions in different ways. Do the bot frameworks help with that? Uh, yeah, very much so. Most of them have. Uh, so that's it. You know, there's two aspects to it. One is 
natural language understanding, right? So it's taking uh, spoken speech and, and extra, you know, converting that into text. Mm. And that's pretty much a solved problem these days, right? So as long as you don't speak with, or rather, as long as the audio quality is reasonably good and as long as you don't speak with a really strong or weird accent. Like Scottish people. Yeah, like <laughs> Scottish people, yeah. A, y you're looking at accuracies that exceed 95%, ah. right? So, and most vendors, technology vendors that have stuff in this space are at that level, right? 95, 98, really, really approaching uh, 100%. So that's a solved problem, right? From an engineering perspective, that's fixed. You don't know, you know, I think in like 10 years ago, you needed to train it, right? So it uh, trained this type of software. It would show you a paragraph of text and it would have to, you'd have to read it back I to it. I remember that. The, the, and yeah, the yeah, Windows Vista had, I think, this type of big favor. Yeah, Dragon Naturally Speaking, it would have to be trained to right. your voice. Now that's not necessary anymore. Mm. And despite of that, it's 95 plus percent accurate. So that's mm. a solved problem. Right? So we've fixed that. Uh, now, uh, natural language processing is, is a tougher animal, right? Because we can express the same query, the same thought, and... 20 different ways, right. right? And there's nuances to it, and you know, there's you know, British English versus American language. Mm -hmm. So that's a tougher problem. Right. But there are software platforms out there that allow you to to fairly easily do that to a certain extent. So that you, your chatbot, you know, if somebody says to it, "I'm looking for a new laptop. I want it to be lower than, f easier than, uh, lighter than five pounds, running Windows." Uh, I don't know, that has a touch screen and that has an eight hour ba battery life. Yep. There is software out there that will take out, oh, so the intent is laptop and here's the attributes. Yep. Lighter than five pounds, boom, 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 that's boom. A, that's a challenge. So you get, yeah, so instead of you getting uh, that block of text that mm. you then have to manipulate up here, what, you know, doing string manipulation, search for laptop, search for this, this, this. Yeah. No, you get a data structure that you can then code to and figure out so what, oh, so it's a laptop, okay, and these are search filters, and you match them up, and you can then very easily go into your database, do a product search, and surface, you know, top five, and show them in the chatbot okay. UI, okay? So we're looking for, and then or ask potential clarifications. I've got stuff from Sony, Asus, and HP. Do you have a preference? Uh, you know, what's your maximum budget, that sort of thing. So, right. it, uh, you know, that's not as easily solved, as natural language understanding, but it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's, it's it's not as hard as it used to be, right? Okay. So it's not so it's it really no longer rocket science. If you want to tackle this space, then yeah. really you, you'd want to uh, first uh, learn this, learn one of these bot frameworks that you talked yeah. about, and then learn how to use that framework to call into some library that would do yeah, this ideally, processing of natural language. Yeah, ideally language. you want to plug into a sort of a cloud ecosystem that solves most of these cross-cutting concerns for you, right? Okay. So you don't want to, uh, you know, you could go there and write all of that, uh, all of that internal plumbing okay. on your own, but it behooves you to plug into an existing ecosystem that gives you translation out of the box, mm. that gives you security, okay. auditing, you know, logging, telemetry, you know, DevOps, CI, CD, all There's of that good so stuff. There's always so many details that in every application. Well, it's a piece of software, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, behind the scenes, most of these things are web APIs, okay. right? Except, um, you know, they um, you generally surface them instead of through, uh, surfacing them through a line of business application or through a web app. Uh, you know, they, you know, their front end lives in Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or one of these I other see. things. Okay. So it's all of the concerns that apply to any other software projects apply here. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. There, um, is there anything we haven't covered that you think we should? Uh, let me think. So what a uh, one of the sort of key takeaways is, you know, obviously the ex human users expectations in terms of the quality of a chatbot is 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 really high so the latest data i've seen is is users are even more stringent with with chatbots than they are with mobile applications or web applications mm -hmm. now it's a good fact it's a known fact that you know if your e-commerce web app loads in lo more than 2 seconds engagement drops off right so right. people are oh, okay, screw it i'm going to amazon it's taking you two seconds to load up. Right. You know, mobile, it got even harder, right? People expected the screen because you're, you're not multitasking on a, on, a, on a smartphone, so you're sitting there looking at the screen right. waiting for the, the thing to populate. Uh, chatbots are even worse, so if, mm -hmm. you, if you get it wrong two, three times and it's not understanding what you mean, it has and, to be responsible. Oh, I'm not sure snappy. where you're driving at. Uh, you know, uh, the, you know, so, so it becomes extremely important for you to actually, you know, 
triage whenever your chatbot gets stuck, mm. right? So, you know, okay, so you want it to log, uh, potentially even send you an email, hey, I got stuck, user asked this, and figure out, oh, I I is he asking to marry the chatbot or something? It's a <laughs> silly question like that. Uh, or is or did it get stuck in so, and I missed a sale? Right. Or I was not able to, to, to address a customer support ask uh, question. So, mm -hmm. so that's, you know, relevance and reliability and, and is going to be a big challenge when, when it when it comes to uh, when it comes to these things because once you've uh, you know burned that bridge with that user, it's really hard to to, hard to, to win them back. back. Yeah, trying yeah. to get them to to reengage with you is really tough. So Interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where would people go to learn more on this topic? Uh, where w well, there's a lot of resources out there these days, right? So uh, um, you know, if the, if you're if they're a Microsoft, uh, uh, their mi the background is a Microsoft Technologies. I think the the URL is botframework.com for the for Microsoft's off offering in this space. But it's um, you know, there's a, there's a plethora of of articles sort of uh, reiterating what I said here that we're just on, you know, bots are on the uh, significantly on the mm -hmm. way up. So just all of the research from Forrester and Gardner points that way. So there's a lot of resources online. But if they're, okay. you know, um, Do you have an online presence? If I have an online, I have a blog that I neglect with great success. Ah, well, so, you it on because there's <laughs> literally tens of people watching this video. There. Tens of people, there you go. <laughs> so I, I finally will have some content to link to out there. What's, so the, that's, uh, what's the URL? It's just my, my last name, dot .ro. So okay. I am geeky enough to where I purchased the RO domain. That's my family's Excellent. last name. So you know, when, my, uh, when I got married, you know, my wife got the ring, the, the, the you know, the marriage certificate, so and the, the yeah, well, I gave her an email address, nice. uh, Gabriella at Nicolita dot ro. So <laughs> that was, uh, that, yeah, that was the, yeah. Um, that probably sealed the deal right there. Yeah, oh, oh, wow, I get to have an email address at Nicolita, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I am geeky enough to have done that. But, yeah, it's uh, Nicolita dot ro is my, uh, is my homepage, which I uh, neglect with a great success. I should probably... Uh, go in there and update WordPress before somebody finds a vulnerability in there and <laughs> yeah. it, it becomes used for some nefarious purpose <laughs> and somebody starts, uh, I don't know, Bitcoin mining through my website or something. <laughs> yeah, so that Sylvia, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity here. Technology is best served with friends.